everyone. We're back for another edition of Ask Ron. Ron, you ready to go? Man, I'm ready. Okay, we've got Edgar from Alexandra, Florida. Hey, Edgar. Hi, Ron. I was searching for IRA material in the Gold Club, and I saw mm -hmm. in some older videos that you used to do business with Equity Trust, but mm -hmm. now it looks like you use Quest. Mm -hmm. I'm about to create an IRA account to do real estate deals, and I was wondering which custodian do you prefer now? Well, I think you answered the question for me. I use Quest for my IRA is. Look, both companies are quality companies. I used Equity Trust for a lot of years. I've even visited their place. They're a good company. I just that they're, they, they got a little hard for me to do business with for reasons that wouldn't apply to you, and their rates started climbing, so I just made the move to Quest. That's all. You probably should check out both and make your own decision on that one. Ain't neither one of them sending me any money, by the way, so <laughs> it's up to you. Both of them are good companies to use for what we do. Okay, we've got James from Colorado. Mm -hmm. I have a FISBO offering 20 acres of undeveloped land for mm -hmm. 197000 that has water and electric established. Wow. And is next to, be, next to a highly desired neighborhood real estate. Mm -hmm. Nice. It would need to be divided into lots for building. Yes. Is this worth looking at, and how would you structure it? Well, absolutely it's worth looking at. How I would structure it would probably take the next 30 minutes. And frankly, you've got a lot of information to collect before anybody could answer that question anyway. And in commercial, especially in land development, which we're doing it right now, I've got a commercial mastermind group. In fact, I just spent the last three days with them. One day out on a boat yesterday fishing, which is my, my face is so red today. Um, by the way, I caught the biggest fish on the boat. Just wanted to verify that. Uh, I forgot the question. Oh, I got it. So land development requires a lot of due diligence. There's so many things that you need to know before you buy it. But if I did structure that offer, I would structure it with owner financing. And I'd give them a reasonable down payment. In your case, maybe $20,000 down and I'd let them owner finance the balance. And we, we usually, in fact, I got a whole bunch of letters of intent going out today with almost identical terms, just different numbers. Um, I give them a three-year balloon with no payments in the middle, uh, sometimes accruing interest at 3%, and uh, $5,000 earnest money deposit. But remember, you, you got about a 60-day due diligence time minimum where that's not even at risk. Unlike houses, you put up that deposit, is not at risk. Any commercial contract will have that in it. And then at least another 30 days to close. So gosh, you got 60 days to get all the information Another 30 to close, and all you got to do to close is uh, get to 20 grand and, and, uh, and close it with owner financing. Now, that I'm only doing that after I know that my intended use for that property is not going to be an issue for the city, and then a whole bunch of other things that I need to know before I close to make sure that I, that, that with some, uh, what's going to kill the development? Because the first thing I would look for is why isn't this already been bought and developed? And that may be a seller issue, it may not be a land issue. But there's a whole string of things. Uh, you know, if you're asking me this question, you need to get into my commercial boot camp coming up because I'll be doing a whole session just on land, which is kind of my favorite thing that we're working on right now. I've got 20 some odd uh, members, and that's mostly what they're sending me right now all over the country. So um, I'd love to see your project, but I can't. Uh, you got to be in my mastermind group for me to personally participate in your project. However, if you have a a mentor in uh, single-family houses, which I'll, uh, you know what I mean, uh, one of, in our mentoring program, if you tell your mentor to at least pass this on through to me, I'll give you some comments back. All right, that's best I can do with that question, John. All right, and we have a commercial property coming up November 4th through 6th. Mm-hmm. Okay, we've Virtual. got... Virtual. Right. Okay, we've got uh, Craig from Louisiana. Craig? Hi, Ron. Are there differences when you are selling your house to a tenant buyer with owner financing and lease option purchase? Well, yeah, that's like the difference between night and day, Greg. A lease option purchase means you're renting them the house with the option to buy. They own nothing except the option to buy. You're still the owner. Uh, however, I pass on all the repairs to them and their, their deposit is non-refundable, which is in the thousands. So. A uh, big, big difference. When I sell it with owner financing, I'm selling the house. I have no more uh, depreciation, no more appreciation, um, you know, none of the things that I get if I still keep the house. 
Plus, if I sell a house with owner financing, I'm selling it with short-term capital gains, which means as I collect the money, I'm going to pay the taxes, but at your highest tax bracket. Whereas if I lease option it and it doesn't sell for at least a year later, I'll be paying long-term capital gains at about 15% for you. So there's a lot of differences. In fact, if you haven't been to my quick start school yet, please get there because we definitely have a big discussion on this. And um, it is a decision that has to be made by the entrepreneur. And there's a lot of both going on. But I do lease options. And also, uh, what state you live in will determine how quickly you could get it back if you had to forcefully take it back. And that might help you make the decision as well. For example, I live in Texas. I can have the thing back in a couple of months. I live in Florida. It's going to be a minimum of six to eight months before I could get the property back if I had to force sale of it. So that's an important ingredient in the decision as to whether you want to sell or finance or not. Okay. Uh, okay. Our uh, final question from Maria from New Hampshire. Maria. I have a seller willing to do owner financing with no mm -hmm. money down, mm -hmm. no interest. That's good. <laughs> willing to sell for $150,000, mm -hmm. but they have an $80,000 line of credit with the first mortgage paid mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. House estimate is coming in between $229,000 and $249,000, so lots of equity. <sighs> wow. How do I proceed since you teach that with a line of credit, the banks are likely to call the loan due? Well, you have choices here. That would not bother me because I could fend off the bank if they wanted to call the loan due. Worst case, easily hold them off long enough to get somebody qualified to cash out. Uh, there's a good chance the bank would never challenge it and probably wouldn't unless somebody threw it up into their face that title is transferred. You know, banks don't just check titles every other month to see if they transferred. Something has to trigger them to even care. Uh, when you buy it on a wrap, there's language in there where the seller cannot extend that line of credit anymore. Not that I even care about that because my payment's going to be fixed. And as long as their credit line, the money they draw out doesn't exceed the amount of money that I owe them, I'm not too worried about that. And most of the time, I mean, I, I've never seen a, a, a seller go get more money on a credit line after they sold a house anyway. All right. So that is the somewhat risky way, would not bother me because I know how to the panel of bank as long as the seller is okay with it because they have to sign a CYA letter. If you want to totally eliminate that possibility, then you can always lease it with an option to buy and then the bank cannot call the loan due because title has not transferred. So the decision is yours. Now, uh, just remember if I lease it, I don't get depreciation. Uh, I will probably get appreciation and I could still get the debt pay down. So that would probably be the safest thing for you to do for you and the seller. And, and I'm sure no attorney would have an issue with that either. All right, that it? That's all for this week. Okay, guys, we got some events coming up that I think you need to be aware of, whether you even been to them or not. Uh, Quick Start School is coming up shortly, the uh, uh, virtual, in, in November, the uh, virtual event. That will uh, be the four day event on camera like we've been doing it. However, that event will be held live here in Amelia Island, which is a resort in the north of Jacksonville, a really cool place. And so we chose a really cool place to have our uh, first live event in six or seven months. And uh, that one will fill up, so it's got limited spacing. So if you're interested in that, make sure you uh, call us and get registered right away. And then we got another summit coming up. When is that going to be, John? Uh, that is November 18th through the 20th. Okay. That's going to be a three-day summit, all brand new people, all brand new content. We are carefully choosing the best of the best out there right now of the, uh, of the trainers that I have hand chosen that I think you need to see. So uh, keep an eye on that. That is free, and you should get registered for that as soon as we release it. Now, I would remind everybody that has already been to the Quick Start or the Commercial Boot Camp, which is, when's the commercial, John? Uh, November 4th through 6th. November 4th through 6th, and then in December it's what? Uh, i got to look that one up. Okay, sometime in December. <laughs> All right. Um, the uh, commercial boot camp is the last one I'm going to do this year. It will be virtual, and it's going to be the last virtual one because I'll be doing them live uh, next year. Um, next year we'll be doing everything live, but not as often. So we'll mix virtual with live so you get the benefit of the both. 
and when you register for one, you get both at no extra charge. Uh, and you don't have to sit around and wait for the live event to come before you get on a plane. You can um, actually get the link and start uh, reviewing it right away. Well, virtual will never replace live, ever, okay? So you need to put both of them in your plans. But if you have been to a virtual or a live quick start or commercial boot camp, you can re-register, but you have to re-register. You can't just show up. You won't get the link unless you re-register. Um, Again, if it's quick start, you're free in your first year. Many times you want to come. If it's commercial, it's only $500 to repeat or $500 to repeat quick start if you're after your first year. In Summit, it's free anyway, but you still have to register. All right? And quick start in December, live here in, in uh, Jacksonville, is mm -hmm. the 9th through the 12th. And it's at Amelia Island, too. So, excuse I'm me. You, excuse you're going to love this place. This is a really, really cool place to be. And um, it's in Fernandina Beach, actually, if you have any idea where, where that is. All right, guys, I will see you next week. Same time, same channel. You've got a quarter of the year left. Let's get out here and start doing something and make something big happen. See you then.